Ashley, so you're reporting an emergency? Um, I suppose so, yes. What are you reporting? Um, my, I was just at the Michaels here in Petaluma, and a couple tried to kidnap my children. What the best description you can recall? I mean this and the nice, they're just kind of rough looking. Are you or your husband, I mean, like important people for some reason? Is there something they would be like, we're going to take your kids and hold them to ransom? I or? might be by, my kids are very good looking. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard. I want to like be, No, I, you take I really do want to be 100% sure because I oh. do not want to falsely no, 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 no. anything. No, no, no. Um, I don't want to misrepresent what has happened. I do think it's important for mom's parents to be aware, but I don't. Like, it makes me a little uneasy that you guys are getting blown up about this. Katie Sorensen, an aspiring momfluencer, calls 911 to report every parent's worst nightmare. As her follower count skyrockets, the community grows outraged, and investigators are placed under immense pressure to quickly solve the case. But as they dig further into the investigation, they soon find that something isn't quite right with Katie's story. And what they discover turns out to be almost as shocking as the report itself. On December 14, 2020, in Petaluma, California, Katie Sorensen made this call to 911. Is she reporting an emergency? Um, I suppose so, yes. What are you reporting? Um, my, I was just at the Michaels here in Petaluma, and a couple tried to kidnap my children. Tell me exactly what happened. We pulled into Michaels, we're getting out of the car, and a couple was parked in front of us. They followed us into the store, followed us throughout the store, followed us through checkout. We're on the phone right behind us. I heard them making comments about my children's hair color and eyes, and I thought it was just to be polite. Um, I walk out to my car. There's a large white van. There were two people who did this? Yes, it was a couple, but then there was a third person that was in the white van. And let me get your name and phone number. Okay, my name is Katie Sorensen. Okay, I've got an officer. He's going to go check the, the parking lot of Michael, see if we can locate that van. After receiving this unnerving 911 call, Officer McGovern and his trainee meet Katie outside of the police station to get her story, starting with how the couple had supposedly followed her and her two young children into the store from the parking lot. They were kind of suspicious. They were watching me. I took a while to get out of the car because I had a stroller. They followed me throughout the entire store, every aisle I went down, got in line right behind me. We're talking on the phone, and they were say I wasn't listening to everything they said, but they did say blonde hair, blue eyed, boy, girl. They were talking about my kids, I think. Okay. The lady in front of me could kind of sense they were being off. They were just getting really close and just kind of saying weird things. Okay. And then um, she let me get in front of her. I checked out. Um, they should have taken a while because they were another person behind me. Yeah. Although Katie might not realize it. What she tells the officer next will later come back to haunt her, as her story hinges on this one unsettling detail. They must have put their stuff down. They just followed me right out to the car. I called my husband, and we have a code word, so I said it. And he's just stayed on the phone with me until I got the kids out. They were walking in circles around my car first. And then as I was buckling my daughter in, they came up to the stroller, did one circle around the stroller, saw that I was watching them. And I was too, I don't know why I got too scared to say something to them. So I saw an old man behind them and he was looking and we just made eye contact. I said, excuse me, could you help me lift this? And him and he was an older man. So he must have had a caretaker or something. Yeah. They both came over and helped me and stayed with me and helped. I left. As if this isn't terrifying enough, what Katie describes next is like something out of a horror film. And then, so where did the people go? Um, so they got into their car. They're, oh, this was another big part. When I walked up, I knew what was happening because there was a white van parked right next to my car with the slider door right close. So they could have just took them, put them in that white van. Okay. That's my assumption. Um, so the only thing you've heard them say is if possibly a description of your two kids or you and your two kids? Yeah, that's the only thing that was weird, but then they were circling my stroller and the car. The van that was parked wasn't their vehicle. They were in a different one. Okay. Um, and so whoever was in the van, he got out. And then as those people were walking over to me, he got back in. And I made eye contact with him. And he, and he was the guy with the rimmed glasses that you described? Did yeah. they? But So outside of proximity, did they communicate with each other? Are you just assuming they were? I'm just assuming they were. When asked for a description of the couple's car, 
Katie tells the officer that she couldn't make out much due to the glare of the sun. However, she was able to see that it was a four-door compact vehicle that was dark in color. Katie was, however, able to get a good look at the couple. If you were presented photos of any of these people, would you be able to recognize them? Yes. Just because I was looking at them, because I, I was trying to disregard my feelings and trying to make conversation. Maybe I was just being crazy, so I kept looking right at them to see if they would talk to me and they wouldn't okay. make eye contact. What were the descriptions of the two females? Were the two ladies? No, it was a male and a female. Were the two people following you? Uh, the male and the female were two people following Okay, yeah, so what the best description you can recall? Um, the male was, he had darker skin tone, uh, maybe Hispanic. He was wearing a black hoodie that said Black Lives Matters and had like a graffiti all around it. Um, the mask he was wearing was one of those pull over, kind of, well, no, it's just a pullover, like a ski. Like a, yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know if that's helpful. Um, yeah, like a, what do you call it, gator? Yeah. He had a shaved head. Describe the female again? Um, she was uh, Caucasian, had reddish hair, but it was more of like box dyed. It wasn't natural red. Um, she had on a blue mask that had some sports team. I didn't see the logo. Um, I don't recall what she was wearing. Okay. So blue mask, red hair, I mean, that'll stand out. Yeah. I mean, this and the nice, they're just kind of rough looking. Like, I don't know how I thought. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> In a video posted to her Instagram page, Katie would later describe what happened and what she thought of their appearance. Monday of this week, my children were the targets of attempted kidnap. I definitely felt the heebie-jeebies. I didn't feel good, but I thought I was judging a book by its cover. Um, they were not, like, kind. That sounds bad, but they weren't... Um, they weren't clean-cut individuals. With a description of the couple now established, Officer McGovern searches for a possible motive. Um, and they were on the phone with somebody making the, giving the description. I don't know if they were on the phone. I didn't turn around to see if they were talking. You just to overheard them. I just heard, and it didn't. It was very weird context. Like it didn't. Uh, and then I guess are are you or your husband? I mean, like, important people for some reason? Is there something they would be like, we're going to take your kids and hold them to ransom? I or? might be by My kids are very good looking. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, um, I don't know. My, my son has special needs, so he's nonverbal. Okay. But, I mean, as far as someone, like, seeking out us, no. Yeah. Um, have, has anything like this happened in the past? No. Okay. Um, huh, that's bizarre. Um, and these people, well, you said they look rough looking, and the, your children are... This didn't seem like a recruiter or something for like a modeling agency. They weren't like oh my God. two very attractive kids and were did anything. They would have said something to you most no, likely. They just trying to take just try. Yeah. Okay. As Katie continues to reveal more and more disturbing elements of her story, Officer McGovern tries to piece together some other key details. Obviously, the, the suspicious behavior is super weird. The fact that they circled your car, circled the stroller is bizarre. I mean, we can... I don't necessarily know if it meets the criteria of like attempted kidnapping. Um, but I it, don't care to cross. I'm not. Try, I just want to make it people aware. So yeah. That it doesn't happen to somebody else is all. I, Cl yeah, clearly, and that's why we have like three people circling the shopping <laughs> okay. centers over there. Still, so like, what the heck's going on? Um, and then again, associating the two different vehicles. That's just based on a hunch that you think they were associated. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, not a problem. But the gentleman in the van, aside from making eye contact with them, didn't appear to interact with anybody. Not, I was so caught. I was on the phone with my husband, like, just freaking out. Yeah. So I didn't really pay attention to that. I was just trying to get us safe in the car. What? Yeah. What, uh, I mean, and again, you guys obviously have your standard operating procedure. I've never heard of families having a safe word like that. What, it, what, so what made you set that up? We listen to true crime podcasts. Okay. <laughs> Which is silly, but we just always decided that if it was more of if you were in trouble, like yourself. So he didn't even know what I was talking about. Like, yeah. He was like, wait, you're, what's going on? Aren't you at Michael's? Yeah. And then I was like, I think someone's following us. Got it. So. Okay. As the interview comes to a close, Officer McGovern informs Katie of the next steps before they part ways. We'll keep looking for them, and again, we'll put a BOL out, most likely. for. I mean, it's a dark-colored compact with a possible male Hispanic, and then the description of a white female adult with red hair and a blue mask. 
um, just to at least contact and sort it out. But again, criminally, it's going to be tough to string together what we got. So, okay, well, sorry that happened to you today. It's, that's a very rare occurrence, especially since, I mean, you said there are a lot of people at Michael's. It's weird that they would have been that, you know, yeah. forthcoming. So. It was very weird. And like I said, we listen to crime podcasts, so I try to, like, not go there, but it was that. Yeah. Happening. So, <laughs> All right, I'll let They're you guys. Done. I'll let you guys get out of here. All right, well, have a have a better day. Um, we'll look for these people, okay? Okay, thank you so yeah, much. Not a problem. Okay. Yeah. On December thirteenth, six days after speaking to Officer McGovern, Katie posts a two-part video to Instagram recounting her petrifying experience that day. Soon, the videos go viral, receiving more than four million views, and Katie's follower count leaps from about three thousand to over eighty thousand followers in just one day. Katie's story is particularly concerning for residents of Petaluma, as the city is home to one of America's most notorious child abductions, the kidnap and murder of 12-year-old Polly Class in 1993. Pretty soon, worried parents began calling the Petaluma Police Department, and the following day, on December 14th, Officer McGovern, along with Detective Yeager, head to Katie's house to confront her with some surprising new developments. So it sounds like the, the initial statement you gave Officer McGovern was a lot different than what you had posted on Instagram, and that's why we're here, okay? Because um, what you posted on Instagram is pretty concerning to us. So if we need, if they're, if this couple is out there attempting to steal children, right, we need we need to get all the details that we can. Yes. So we, uh, we were able to go to Michael's today and pull up the video surveillance footage from that. Um, so there's just some clarifying stuff yeah. that, um, so I want to show you a couple photos just to make sure we're talking about the same people, yeah. if, if you're willing to look yes, at them. Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. After positively identifying the couple, Detective Yeager presents Katie with her findings, subsequently flipping the investigation into the attempted kidnapping on its head. So on the video footage, um, this couple actually is in the struggle for, for about five minutes. Both uh, of them? Yeah. And so we watch them, um, we watch them through, on the video footage throughout the store, and they're, and they're not following That you guys just happened, the only time you guys come back together is in, when you're in checking out. They come back, they actually have product items with them. Um, so... Before we, before we blast our photos out, right, to the media to be on the alert, I want to make sure that you're, you're accurate and I'm not, I'm not disheartening what you're telling me. Oh, no, 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 I just want to make sure that because what you're telling us and what we're seeing from the video surveillance, they don't match. And I think this is, I'm so glad that this happened because I think this was an important piece. I, I think, I don't know if you were the officer, I can't remember. Okay, That's yeah. Why I'm here. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I... It's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is my special needs. But, uh, uh, she's cute. So you, when you're in a situation like that and you're on high alert, Absolutely. You, you hear, you think you're hearing things, you mm -hmm. think you know what's happening. So this is an important step that I think. It's awesome. So I'm not like trying to stick to my story or whatever no, like no, that. No, no, I want. I, no, I'm just like, if these people are out here doing what you're saying they're doing, yeah. that, that's something for us to address, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, our next step is, is going forward with this is... Um, one, prosecuting them, right? Yeah. And two, making sure this doesn't happen again. At yeah. the same time, we need to make sure that that these people are, in fact, the people that you saw. Yeah. And they're doing what you were saying that they did. Because yeah. nobody wants to accuse somebody falsely, right? Exactly. And that's why I'm a little discouraged of the fact that that isn't the same person that I saw in the parking lot if they were in there before me. Um, so you just looked at the photo and you said you were definitely that's, sure. I'm 100% sure that that's them. Okay. Um, I, <laughs> the only thing that, well, I'm sorry, I'm just, can I see you go inside for a minute? Absolutely. It's just a little less distracting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Just as the heat is starting to turn up, Katie takes a pause to settle her son, granting her a momentary reprise from Detective Yeager's uncomfortable line of questioning. A few moments later, Katie's husband arrives home. I'm going to be dad, I'm assuming. Hi. Hey, Dad. Very cute kids, Dave. Very yep. cute. Yeah, they are. Uh, hey, people are trying to call you. Yeah. I know you're busy, but just... I didn't realize. Sorry, you probably won't leave me alone. So that's that's my favorite. No, I'm so... Hi, 
Um, so anyway, back to this. We want to make sure that because we are going to put the pictures out on the on media. Yeah. That, that they're, that these are the people that you in fact said were doing that, and they reached for the scroll, and you thought they were going to kidnap you. These are important, yeah, important things that we yeah. need. Yeah, that part, without a shadow of a doubt, that is what was happening. There is no, there is absolutely no rhyme or reason to someone taking steps forward and reaching. That is without a shadow of a doubt. I can see how the timing of following. Yes. Um, the timing of following in, mm -hmm. I can see how that could have been um, misinterpreted. Um, Do you remember what they were saying to you? They didn't say anything to me. Okay. They were talking about the kids. They were describing their features. Okay. Um, and then they said they made comments about him not wearing a mask. Um, I didn't listen clearly to everything that they were saying, but they said blonde hair, blue eyes. Uh, should be easy to distract, should yeah, be easy one, to... One year old, um, yeah, they were just saying, like, things... Usually, what I was expecting at first was I thought they were going to make comments to that my kids were wearing masks, so that was where my head was at. Um, and so, I wasn't really listening in detail, I just read my kid the first time that I heard them talking. Mm -hmm. At this very moment, Katie has just backtracked on something she said in one of her Instagram videos. In both encounters with the police, Katie makes it clear that she didn't hear the man speak much. However, she told her followers that after the couple described her children's features, she claims she then heard the man say, The boy will be... The boy will be easier because he's not wearing a mask, so the mom not, must not really care about him. It's hard. I want to, like, be... No, I want I, you to take I really do want to be 100% sure because I oh. do not want to falsely... No, 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 no. Anything. No, no, no. Um, as the awkward conversation continues, Katie finally acknowledges what brought the police back to speak with her. Like this whole Instagram thing, like I had, I last night, yesterday, had 3,000 followers, mostly friends, people I went to school with. Like I did not think that this was going to be anything at all. Um, um, so, um, people calling us because they have a problem with this and now they're afraid of their children, which is, which is one step. So we either want to reassure them that this that we're doing everything we can yeah. to find them. Yeah. Or, you know, it's like we're trying to give you justice and, yeah. and uh, to do the right thing here. Um, at the same time, there's a lot of, there's a lot of eyeballs watching. Right. So, 100% they reached for my sh stroller. 100% they were saying things that they shouldn't have been saying about my kids. Um, 100% they still did my car at the end. It should be noted that this is now the third time Katie has told officials that the couple circled her car, first to dispatch in her initial 911 call, then to Officer McGovern when he met her outside the police station, and now to Detective Yeager. Despite her claims that the couple 100% circled her car, she described the incident to her followers on Instagram differently. And they walk around, not the full perimeter, but half of the car. They go back and forth around half of my car. They are parked closer to Michael's. You know, they have no reason to go three cars beyond their own car to walk around my wife's car. You know what I mean? Now that's what's really... Um, and that, that is of, like, I will test mm -hmm. it, that is what happened. Um, one thing that I have felt like I don't have 100% and when people ask me, I say, I don't really know, is the white van. It, there, it very well could have just been coincidental that someone was in a van right behind me. Although small, this is another discrepancy in her story. There was a white van parked right next to my car. Perhaps sensing Detective Yeager's skepticism, Katie's husband chimes in to back her up. He told him details like, you went to the very back corner of the store to get your spray paint and they followed you. So they watched the footage and it, this couple didn't come in. It, it's not the same couple that came in at the same time. As the, these people so, that she's saying that followed her out were already in the store five minutes before. We watched them throughout the store and they don't come on surveillance. They don't come with anywhere near her until they, everybody's in line. And these people in line act a lot of so that's why we drove out. We're trying, we're trying to call her to kind of clarify some of this. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry. That's the okay. kids, I, I really didn't have my phone. And I've been trying not to look at it because it's too much for me right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't this is all our property. So, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, would you recognize these two if you saw them again? If we were to give a, do a photo lineup, would you recognize them again? Yeah. Okay. And um, willing to go forward with prosecution? Yes. Okay. 
All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to work on these people. We're probably going to put this out in some social media, see if some people can help us. Um, and then Officer McGovern will contact you at a later date when we have a full lineup. Maybe you can come down to the station to, to view that. Okay. I don't want to misrepresent what has happened. I do think it's important for mom's parents to be aware, but I don't, like, it makes me a little uneasy that you guys are getting blown up about this. I mean, I think it's important, but I also, I don't want to... I guess I'm feeling doubt that I misremembered the story and I don't want to misrepresent what happened and make it a bigger, I don't know. Um, so for my personal, it's like if, I'm, if I am a victim of something like this, I would want to um, trust us, right, that we're going to do the right thing. Yeah. And I, I would like to trust the police department that we're going to do the right thing. Yes. I don't know if, and this is just me, I don't know if I would want my stuff blasted over maybe. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I don't know how that makes you feel. It would make me feel uneasy. Yeah. Um, but it, it definitely makes it harder for us okay. to find them and prosecute them when it's everywhere. Yeah. Um, it, it just does. It, it's kind of like, I don't mean to say this, but the O.J. Simpson thing, it was, it was so blasted everywhere, right? Yeah. They had a hard time finding a town that they could prosecute it. They could get 12 jurors that didn't know anything yeah. about it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So this doesn't help us when it goes out, when it gets blasted like mm -hmm. this. Um, I mean, yeah, that's what I don't want. I care more about them not doing this again. I care more about, like, parents being more aware, but I don't think it's necessary for everybody to know all the details of uh, everything. So I guess that was just you answering the question, was okay. to just keep that. Um, I did turn off all the comments and I'm not accepted anymore. After Detective Yeager warns her of the possible repercussions of posting more about the case on social media, Katie then goes inside to get her phone so she can show them a message she received from someone online telling her that something similar happened to them in the Michaels parking lot. While the detective looks at the message, Officer McGovern has one more serious issue with Katie's story to point out as they prepare to leave. So did you go right from Michaels back to your car? Yeah. The man did exit the store quickly behind you, but the woman remained in the store for almost a minute, uh, chit-chatting with the, the clerk. They were She was trying to make a sale. She was scanning something on her phone. I'm assuming that was like a receipt or yeah. a, a coupon. Yeah, so she remained in the store and was making transactions. That's why I'm trying to see if if the, if, if you recall both of them hand in hand while we got to their car, at what point they linked back up. The hand in hand, I didn't visually see that until they were surrounding walking around my car so I okay. they weren't walking hand in hand behind me out of the store okay um because I was so like just trying to get to the car I didn't turn around and look I just felt behind me that I just were, felt there was followed, some presence felt, yes and then getting to my car and seeing them do that is so but this is the last time you saw them they were inside the store and then upon exiting they were also both together it wasn't just the guy or just the girl. It was both of them were, were linked back up at that point. Yeah, at the point that I, without a shadow of doubt, saw them. Yes, they okay. were both together. And they, I, there is no excuse. I would love to hear if there is a one for taking a few steps forward towards the stroller, a few steps back, a few yeah. steps forward. And I saw, I saw some, he had something in his hand because that was my first red flag. Is why are they holding hands like, like what? Is he, he was carrying a phone the whole time he was in the store. Okay. So that's probably, I don't know why he would have changed his behavior in the parking lot, okay. but that's what he was. And then when she left the store, she was carrying a bag um, of belongings. But After this uncomfortable exchange has concluded, Detective Yeager gives Katie her card and leaves with Officer McGovern. In an effort to corroborate Katie's story, the Petaluma Police Department issued a press release which included a photograph of the couple, asking for anyone with information to come forward. The couple, later identified as Eddie and Sadie, were made aware of the accusations by their teenage daughter, whose friend recognized them in the photo. The two promptly agreed to an interview with police, and three days later, on December 17th, it was announced that Sadie and Eddie were officially cleared as suspects and the police were now investigating Katie. Katie Sorensen was charged with three counts of falsely reporting a crime, and on June 29, 2023, she was convicted on one of those counts. She was subsequently ordered to serve 90 days in jail, 60 of which could be served on a work release program, and she was required to complete a four-hour implicit bias training. She was also placed on 12 months of informal probation, where she was prohibited from having a social media presence and ordered to submit to warrantless search and seizure of her electronic devices.